Okay, we're starting chapter four, and chapter four is about motion in two and three dimensions. And we'll revisit some of the concepts that we learned in 1D motion and learn how to apply them in two and three dimensions. So you can see here that we have um, a person on a motor, uh, motorbike, dirt bike, and they're jumping. And so you can see they're starting, um, there's my mouse. So they're starting here, right? They're moving um, uh, at an angle. So they start off this ramp, they move at an angle. So they're moving in both the X direction and the Y direction. So the X direction and the Y direction, the X direction and the Y direction. Um, and so we can see the, the arc that they make, right, is uh, 2D is 2D motion at both X and Y. Um, in this example, we see the Ferris wheel, and um, as the uh, as the people move around the Ferris wheel, they're moving in two dimensions, right? There's going to be um, an, an X value and a Y value for each one of these uh, um, of these uh, people loaders, right, um, along the Ferris wheel. So. Um, so that's another example of 2D motion. So here we can use, um, on the left with the motorcycles, we can use X and Y. For this one, it's going to be easier to use R and theta. And the reason it's easier is because all of these, um, uh, all of the little places where people sit is the same distance away from the center. And um, they're rotating about the center. So it's easier to talk about a constant value R for all of them and then a changing theta. So as um, this person is moving, right, they're going to be moving this way. And so they're going to have a changing theta, but R will always be the same. So it's easier to talk about our theta coordinate system versus X, Y, because we would have a changing X and changing Y for the, uh, for the, for the ride. Okay. So we're going to watch a projectile motion demonstration. And so as you're, um, as you're going to about to watch it, think about these things, think about, and you'll, we'll do this in class. You'll be able to discuss with your group. What we want to know is what is the time for the balls to hit the ground? Um, so we're going to, we're going to see like two different types of motion. Um, and we want to see, to know what effect does the initial horizontal velocity of the yellow ball have? So we're comparing a, um, you know, in this picture, it would be a red ball and a yellow ball. And one of the balls is just dropped and the other ball is, um, given an, a horizontal velocity. So meaning, um, it's going to be given a velocity along this line. Um, and it's going to fall as it as it moves. And so um, what is the time for the balls to hit the ground and what effect does that initial horizontal velocity have? So we're going to watch this video. Okay, so we watch the video, and so we want to think about the questions that um, that we talk about or that we mentioned before the video. And so what we saw was that both balls hit the table or hit the ground for the in the video at the same time, um, and we saw that the initial horizontal velocity of the ball that was that had a horizontal velocity that did not affect its vertical motion. So the thing we um, can conclude about watching that video is that the horizontal and vertical motions are independent. Meaning that if I'm moving in X, then what's going on in Y does not affect what's going on in X and vice versa. So if we want to think about analyzing projectile motion problems, we want to remember that, that it's the most important thing about projectiles is that the horizontal and vertical motions are independent and we can solve them independently. 
Um, and so this is an example here. We can see that by, we can see the horizontal velocity here, V X sub zero, right? It's just going to the right. Um, and so it's going to the right, but also because of gravity, right? We can see the acceleration is equal to gravity that um, that object is falling. So it's both moving to the right and falling. And if you look at the arrows, this velocity of the arrow here is the same as the velocity arrow here and here and here. And so our velocity, our horizontal velocity that it starts with is the same as the horizontal velocity that it ends with. Um, but for y, we have, and that's because there's no acceleration in the x direction, right? There's only, it's a starting velocity, there's no acceleration. So it's gonna be moving in the x direction at a constant velocity. But in y, we have an acceleration. So the acceleration points down. So we can see here that we have a velocity down um, that's small and it grows with time, right? And so we end up with a much bigger downward a y velocity than, than we started with up here. And that's because of the acceleration. The acceleration is speeding up our object in the y direction. And since there's no acceleration in the x direction, it's not speeding up in the x direction, but it's not, it's still moving in the x direction just at a constant velocity. So for the y motion, we wanna think about it separately. And we know that we have an acceleration. So we're going to use the um, kinematic equations where a has a value, right? It's going to be the same as what um, as g as the, uh, the gravitational constant. And um, and for x motion, we're just going to use the constant velocity equation. So we have no acceleration, um, and that'll determine the range. And so the range is the distance that where the object started here to where it lands over here. And so that's the range. So this x distance, we, if we set this equal to zero then the distance it gets to before it hits the ground, right before it hits the ground, is our range. So when initial velocity is at an angle, we need to break it into, we need to break that initial velocity into x and y components. And so you can see here we have an, an initial speed, initial velocity, right? And it's the initial velocity vector is at an angle. So it's not before when we looked at this example, right? Our velocity was just in the horizontal direction. But now if we say like kick a soccer ball up into the air or, um, or we you know, shoot something up into the air, right? We have something where we have an initial velocity and the velocity has an X component. This is my X component and this is my Y component, right? And so that initial velocity causes this angle or this launch angle and it causes this path. So if you look back at our first slide over here, right? That's what happened here. This um, motorcycle, this dirt bike, um, guy is uh, taking off and you can see the angle here is this angle right there that's the velocity um, at an angle so it's going to have an x component and a y component so what do we do with that well we can calculate the x and the y components um, and so um, just looking at this if we take our our v zero v sub zero our initial velocity and we think about it as a triangle so we have our hypotenuse of the triangle is our velocity um, and the opposite side, right? We're going to make this into a triangle and we have the um, adjacent side and the opposite side. And that's just adjacent to the angle and opposite to the angle, right? So the when we pick our angle, we define our opposite to the angle as across from the angle and our adjacent is next to the angle. And so um, if we think about our velocity as the hypotenuse and our, um, our V um, our component in the v direction, in the y direction, is the opposite, and our component in the x direction is adjacent. And notice my subscripts here. A lot of times students struggle with subscripts. They're not really sure what they mean. Um, so a subscript just tells you more about the quantity or the variable. So this is my variable. It's velocity. And then sub zero tells me that's the starting velocity. So I might have sub zero here. A subscript is what I'm saying, sub zero, subscript zero. And I could have zero or I could have I, and they both mean initial velocity. Whereas opposite, I have V sub zero. So that's initial velocity, but it's the Y component. So it's uh, in this triangle, it's the vertical component because that's in the Y direction. And then the V sub X here, it's adjacent to the, this, um, this angle. So that's adjacent and V sub, um, sub zero X means the initial velocity, the X component, and that's this side. So if I want to figure out what my um, what these components are because that's what I'm going to use in my kinematic equations since my uh, my motion is independent in the x and y direction. I need these to when I solve the equations. And so how do I go about it? Well, just as a reminder about trigonometry, right, I can think about cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? The thing you probably learned, so katoa. So adjacent over hypotenuse is just, this is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. 
So we're going to have V sub 0 X over V sub 0. And sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. So this opposite over the hypotenuse. So V sub 0 Y over V sub 0. And then we can solve for V sub 0, 0 X and V sub 0 Y. And the way we do that is we just multiply both sides of the equation by V0 to get V sub 0 Y and V sub 0 X alone. And we get, end up with V sub 0 X is equal to V sub 0 cosine theta and V sub 0 Y is V sub 0 sine theta. And so I'd work through that a few times just so you're comfortable uh, making sure you can get the components of the velocity because you're going to use those components, um, the V sub 0 X for the X kinematic equations and V sub 0 Y for the Y kinematic equations. Okay, so I think this is our last slide, um, but how do we go through the problem solving strategy for projectile problems? And so if you think, um, this, this is good to think about when you're handing in your grade scope homework. Um, what are the pieces of the pictorial representation, the physical representation, the mathematical representation, and then assessment? So the pictorial representation you're going to need to draw a picture, define the x and y axes. It's very important to define where zero is and then which direction is positive. So you want to put an arrow that shows which direction is positive, and you want to define x and y. And so x is usually, almost always, horizontal, and y is vertical. So positive x to the right, and positive y up. Um, you're going to make, uh, you're going to have givens and finds. So you're going to make a separate list for what you um, know about the x and y directions, and you're going to write down um, what you need to find. So what are the variables that the problem is asking you to find? And then you're going to write down the generalized equations you will need. And what we mean by generalized equations is use all of the parts of the kinematic equations. So, um, so just make sure you start with the, with the starting equations and then you cross out when you find, like, for example, there's no acceleration in the x direction, you would cross out a sub x. Um, you're going to do algebra first. So solve for the unknown quantities in terms of what you know. That, and what that means is your answer, before you plug any numbers in, you should, um, you know you're solving for something. So let's say you're solving for time. You would um, have t on the left side of the equation is equal to, and then an equation with letters, and then that the last step is to plug in the numbers to solve for t. Um, and so that's where you would plug in numbers and make sure you have units, box your answer, and then assess, does this make sense?